Boys episode five. Man, I'll be honest with you. I only got through about 20 minutes because I was watching today, and then I got a text that said that RGB died, so I immediately turned it off and put the news on, and so I didn't finish watching the whole episode. So okay, I only saw like the first 20 minutes of it. So how you want? You want to save it for Monday? You want to talk about the 20 minutes? What you want to do? Because I don't want to spoil nothing for you. Oh, man, it's all good. If you want to talk about it, we can talk about what I saw so far, or we can hold it. Whichever one. Uh, well, I'm going to let, we, let you choose. Dealer's the choice. The first 20 minutes, we'll dive right on into it. Because, I mean, I could literally go through this segment by segment. This shit was so good, man. Oh, man, it was good. So <laughs> first and foremost, they start this particular episode off with Homelander. <laughs> <laughs> Dude is out of control, man. Dude is out of control all the way. <laughs> Man, look, so they need to do something with him. <laughs> so Homelander is so upset with Maeve. He's killed all her other boyfriends. He's talked about killing her very hot lesbian girlfriend. He's so upset with her. He's got her portraying to be the lesbian of the group. So he's got her doing a commercial where she's saving a chick who's lesbian and yeah. they're doing all this gay pride stuff. And in the middle of that, his manager comes and tells him, shows him a video of when he went. Why did he have to go to Africa, Larry? First of all, you know I got to pick on that. So he goes to Africa where they had this one guy who had powers. Mm -hmm. Powers to blow the wind. Homelander lands in Africa, looks at that guy, says, hey, hey, and eyeballs him, shoots a beam at him, kills Done. him, goes through the clothes hanger, and kills an innocent bystander. And from yeah. that... We start having protests in the street that say, take away his powers. He's upset, and they don't want him to do anything. Stan specifically told his manager, don't you do shit. Did y'all yeah. think Homelander listened to him? No. Hell no. No. Larry, expand on just that segment. Why the hell did they have to have him go to Africa and shoot somebody that wasn't even the Black Panther? Because the Black Panther might would have kicked his ass. Man, yeah, that 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 vibranium mage just went ahead and deflected those those beams right back at him. Exactly. But, man, you know what they're doing? They're playing up all this racial stuff in this show, and I hope they have something that ties it together so it doesn't just end up looking ugly. Because they already have, they already have Homelander with his BS, and now you have Storm uh, Stormfront right. with all her racist shit. I just hope they, I hope if they're playing this and walking this racial line, I hope there's a real. There's a real story tie-in and not just ugliness. Cause we have enough ugliness. I don't I don't want to see that just being it. I don't want there, I don't want there to be that just for the sake of it being that. I want there to actually be a story tie-in where there's gonna be some consequences to this bad behavior. So, well, I feel like I, I feel like they're giving you a lot of isms. You've got a feminazi as Rush Limbaugh coined the phrase. You have a, fem a real deal feminazi who does not like black people and minorities at all. She thinks right. she's superior, but on top of that, she thinks she's one of the superior, superpowered people to go along with that. And she, she has figured out that she knows how to placate Homelander. Homelander's mm -hmm. weakness is he has, he's just like Donald Trump and Mike Pence, just like I told Larry, but Larry don't want to see the, the connection. Homelander, if the people don't like him, he throws a tantrum, he gets off his game, he doesn't know how to act. That was evident throughout this whole entire episode. Yeah, I'll give you, he is like he is like them in that respect. I'll give you that. Yeah, he's just like that. And the the other thing that was, I guess, I'm not gonna say ironic, but was funny about Homelander in the beginning. You saw when Stormfront said, let me help you with your issues, and he basically blew her off. Well, Larry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil this part for you. By the okay. end, he's going to come back for some, some, some help, a lot of he, – he's going to get some help, all right. And uh, <laughs> before we get to that, let's move on to probably what you saw next. So did you get a chance to see them bite the Avengers when they had all three of the girls? They had Maeve, Stormfront. And um, um, light up eye girl 
standing there when the one girl they was using in the commercial scene was like, how are you three going to get this through here? And all three of the girls came together and said their little speech. Oh, I said girls will get it done. Yeah. I said to myself, y'all, y'all stole that from Avengers Infinity War when Captain Marvel came and got the damn Thanos gauntlet. And they was like, how are you going to get through all of them? That's what uh, Spider-Man asked them. And then all the girls lined up behind her and said, she's got help. I thought they was going right. to say that, but they didn't. <laughs> and 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 did, did did you at least get to the point where Starlight confronted Stormfront because um, Starlight's mother showed up and started running her mouth about Compound V? I did. I left off at the part where um, where Mother's Milk and and Huey met uh, met Butcher at at his aunt's house. And and Black Noir showed up, and that's right oh. where I got off, where where, uh, oh. where Butcher was shutting the blinds, and that's oh. where I cut off. Now, see, when I started watching last night, that's where I originally cut off. But mm. you miss be, before we even get to that. You at least got we got to talk about how Butcher in his pain and torment because Becca won't leave that mm -hmm. baby boy. Right. It caused him to, and a lot of people do this, ladies and gentlemen. He went to a techno club and started picking a fight just so, just so that Punk he can get club. beat up. Just so that he can get beat up and feel pain. A lot yeah. of people, when life is too stressful for them, they want to feel pain. Some right. people it's physical for men mostly, and for women, it tends to be emotional. And it right. can be either one for both. But he wanted to get beat up. He got his ass beat up. He went to a grocery store. And they zoomed in on Farm Fresh by Vought, which just shows you how vast <laughs> the Vought organization is in everybody's life. And then they oh. had like three or four statues of the Vought women. They had Starlight and Maeve in that same store. Now, yeah. before, before Butcher could get out the store, he got a phone call from Huey. And I found this enlightening because the way the way Butcher is behaving this episode is the way Huey was behaving last season when he lost his girlfriend. Right. It's, it's like they're just flipping it backwards. Now Butcher don't know how to deal with anything. He can't deal with life. He just don't want to go on. And that's how Huey was. But I, I love it. I love that part when when Huey got the phone with Butcher and he went and told Storm, uh, uh, excuse me, a uh, mother's milk. He said, "Hey." something's wrong with Butcher, something's off. And he just like, uh, and Mother's Milk just started, sort of dismissed him. And he said, why, what happened? He said, he, he said, he was nice to me. He was like, like really nice. He told me I was his canary. And all of a sudden you can see Mother's Milk got real serious. He dropped everything right. he was doing and said, tell me everything that he said. Right. <laughs> but, but it, was like, it was like, oh, this is for real. Like he, he knew. He knew the shit was going down then, Larry. He knew. But speaking of mother's milk, like Larry said, my man be rocking the best T-shirt game. Did you he see does. that Dr. J T-shirt he had man, on? You, I'll tell you, some of you think my T-shirt game is on point. That dude's at a whole nother level, man. Yeah, man. I, I, I bet he ain't paid for none of them either, old punk self, getting all them free T-shirts. But, hey, he rocking that T-shirt game. So now yeah. we're... So, so before we get to where Larry finished, let's talk about our boy, the D, and how he is becoming, he's becoming the poster child for that um, knockoff Christian organization that is really more of a Scientology organization trying to resurrect his career to get him back in the seven. But what he right. don't understand is, Larry, they using him. That to to me, I think they are a covert. Vought type organization trying to use these these super powered people to get more prominent. What do you think about that organization? No, I agree. I think they're definitely using him, but I think that I think what hap what may happen is is I think he may be fine with that because I think the deep so much wants to be a loved and he wants people's approval. He wants to be thought of on the, with the same esteem as as Homelander, and so if he ends up with him in this organization that's sort of putting him out front, like he is all of these things, like he's this wonderful person, 
and they're rehabilitating his reputation. And and even though the girl that he's with is not like the one that he wanted, I think mm -hmm. if she starts to serve the purpose that he that he wants to serve, I think he'll grow to care for. Her. But I think he's gonna I think he's gonna embrace this. Even though I think right now he's going through the motions because he thinks it's gonna get him back into the seven. But I think he might realize I don't need to be back into the seven to get what I want. These people can give it to me. And and I think that's going to be interesting when that changes, when the mind shift, when the mindset changes from they can help me get back to the seven to I don't need the seven. They're going to get me what I need. I want to see how he's going to change. And and because all of a sudden then he's no longer going to feel constrained, like I need to do this or I need to do that so I can get back to the seven. Then he's going to be sort of, you know, he's going to be unleashed in a lot of ways. And maybe we'll get to see what he's really capable of. Mm, nah, he, he's an idiot. It, no. He is an idiot, but I think he's also, he, I think he also wants some power. He, he For him, power is in the seven. And I, I don't think he's bright enough to realize that group he's dealing with has power. But to buffer your argument, something does happen at the end of this episode that might make him start to see the light. I, I'm going to have to tiptoe around this stuff, Larry, because you'll see when you see it. So okay. um, let's talk about our girl, Kam Chi. Did you you saw where she was? Did you see her rip that man face off? Woo, boy, she peeled it. She grabbed it. And, she, and did you see those Russian dudes when they looked? They were like, they looked terrified. Like, oh, shit, what is this? Because she took that dude from like his ear and just peeled his whole face right down. The, that was just disgusting. Woo. Man. Man. And and then she went over there and broke homeboy wrist the way his his her brother's wrist got broke. Yeah. And, and and what you don't know yet is that she was hired to do this. You know, mm. before she got with the boys, she done this because she's had so much torment from other people coming and harming her, her brother, and her brother's family. Right. So she basically became a mercenary. And because she's feeling the weight of what happened to her brother. She's back to being a paid mercenary again. And um, the guy that likes her, I can't think of his name, Frenchy. is following her around. And eventually they end up in a church. And that's when he realizes someone is paying her to do these jobs. He basically cuts her out and says, mm. you're becoming a monster. Your brother wouldn't want this. If you continue going down this road, you have no soul. And at mm. that moment, they're going to have an interaction where I feel he might have finally broke through to her because really it was so interesting that, that, that you meant because when they when 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 he followed her into the room and he saw the aftermath of what she did he looked really really disturbed and at the same he looked i mean it was a weird combination he looked sort of impressed like wow see this is what she can do but he also she, he also looked really disturbed like holy crap you know so <laughs> So I got to read this that his reaction is going to be that I haven't seen it yet. I'm I'm, in, I'm looking forward to seeing that now because I've been rooting for those two to figure something out so that they can actually be together because I like those two together. So, you know, I, I got to read this from my man, the big buzz. Shouts out to my homie who super chat every video. He's mm -hmm. saying he just Googled, he just Googled the butcher and he's supposed to be an extremely skilled fighter. And buzz is like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so in the, in the comics, yes, but on this show, no. But Buzz, <laughs> let, let's even go this direction with it. Okay, who gives a damn how skilled of a fighter you are if you're punching concrete? Yeah, I mean, if you're fighting people with superpowers, I don't give a damn if you got a black belt in martial arts, karate, jujitsu, MMA, Donald Trump, a um, MWA, the WWE, I don't care how many damn black belts you got. You're All not right, gonna do but nothing. I have to take issue with you on one point with that. Go ahead. Batman. Okay, if Batman got into a fight with Superman and he ain't got no kryptonite, his ass is getting killed. I feel you, but when you add all of the when you add all of his superpower of being rich, all of his gadgets, all of his intelligence. He was getting it in with Superman. I mean, he We're, took on the Kryptonian and was Larry, getting it in. Larry, Larry, you're getting off mission. We're talking about Butcher. 
Not I Batman. know, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying the idea of someone without superpowers being able to take on someone with superpowers, it seems unlikely, but it's still there, there's still a, a possibility that it can happen. That's all I'm saying. Well, okay. I, I mean, sure, but in terms of this show, we haven't seen anything to indicate to us that the boys have an advantage over the superpowered people other than recruiting more superpowered people, especially Butcher. And so are and they, they going to welcome are they are they still gonna welcome Huey in when Huey takes that compound V? Of course, it, as long as he don't go crazy. And um th- th- but you the know they point, hate soup, and he's gonna become a soup. Well, um um com, com, com chi is a soup. That's true, and they don't hate her. That's no, right. They don't hate her. No, um, you're right. They and they are starting to tolerate Starlight because they know she's helping them. Right. Starting to no, you're right. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Now let's let's talk about A Train and they're kicking his ass off the show. His punk <laughs> ass. Of, they're kicking his him out of the show. coming in with, with rewrites for the show. Yeah, yeah. Get out so, of here, man. So they get they gave him a script for the for his commercial to say goodbye, get out of here. He didn't want to do it because he really don't want to leave the set. Right. Right. And they basically told him, you're going to say it. OK. So now he's sitting there um, outside the trailer about to cut his commercial. When in comes Stormfront sucking on her damn pumpkin spice latte, being a pure racist. Um, you saw that part, right, Larry? Oh, wait, where she was uh, or she was talking to her. What's her name's mom? No, she was talking to a train. Uh, I'm not sure. I probably saw it. OK. So basically telling him that some people are better than other people. And then she would take a deceptive sip on her damn pumpkin spice latte. And he's like, you're not like that. She's looking at him. Yes, some people are better than other people. Basically saying that white people are better than black people. And his little feelings were hurt. But basically she told him, you're going to have to do this the way your lines are, or I'm going to call Homelander. And mm. they're not going to let him deal with Homelander. And as a matter of fact, when they shoot his commercial, they have Homelander's back to us, people viewing, with A-Train looking him in the face. And then mm. when they cut, it wasn't even Homelander. <laughs> <laughs> and then they talk about how they can't deal with him anymore because he keeps taking Compound V and having heart attacks. That's why mm-hmm. we keep seeing him getting spaced out because he keeps taking more and more compound V. And mm-hmm. I think they highlighted that last season when he left right. the bag with his girlfriend. Right. So, um, but in the end of this episode, and I don't want to give it all away, but Larry, you're going to see a come to Jesus meeting between two soups that might wind up inviting a train because of their hatred of Homelander. Huh. And I ain't gonna tell you who it is. I ain't gonna tell you nothing about that. I'm gonna I'm just gonna stop the review right there. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take a guess and say it's gonna be Maeve. Yep. And yep. I'm gonna yep. say it's gonna be Maeve and probably Starlight. No, Maeve or, or is gonna Maeve in the deep. Maeve is gonna reach out to the deep because Maeve is smart yeah. enough to know that the people he's caking up for could potentially be as powerful as Vought. So she's going to go holler at him about taking down Homeland. Okay. And you've already yeah, got a, see, you've already got a disgruntled, you've already got a disgruntled um, A-Train. You've mm. already got a Starlight who's trying to take down the seven. I told mm. you I could easily see this by the end of the year. The only people left in the seven is going to be Black Noir. Stormfront and Homelander against everybody else, and you you can kind of see them. Looks like they're building toward that, but then sounds like the three. But then <laughs> I'm not going to really tell you what happens with um, the Black Noir and the Butcher and all that. I'll let you see that, but okay. I will I will say this: um, there's going to be there's going to be a sex scene, and you've already seen a clip of the sex scene. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be real weird. because you. But see, what you saw, Larry, you didn't know was a clip of the sex scene. But you've seen it already. Huh. Okay. Do you want I'm me to go to check it out? 
You want me to tell you about it? No, no, no. I want to see it. Okay. okay. And when you see it, you're going to be freaked the hell out. Chris P says, mother from Raised, Up, Raised by Wolves can take all the soups out with a, with a single scream. <laughs> Man. If, you, if you've seen Raised by Wolves, you know exactly what he's talking about, boy. She just so she that, basically screams and people just, just explode. So you mean to tell me they done stole another character from Marvel because that particular character has the powers of the guy from Marvel who's the head of the Inhumans, Black Bolt. Mm. That's what, Black, that's what Black Bolt's powers is in the Inhumans. He never no. talks because if he opens his mouth and the sound comes out of his mouth, he can crack the earth in half. Oh, damn. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So that's why he never.